This is our year of abounding grace. And we thank God for the grace he has supplied. Even since the beginning of the year. May we have what I call increasing grace in the name of Jesus. May that grace increase every day in the name of Jesus. When the learned and wealthy man called John Selden was dying, he invited the Archbishop Usher to his deathbed, probably to pray with him before his departure from this world. He made the following statement, and I quote, I have surveyed most of the learning that is among songs of men, and my study is filled with books and manuscripts on various subjects. And as, as at that time, he had about 8,000 books in his library. These were not books that were just shelved in the library. These were books that he has read. He has taken time to do what? To go through. He said, I have looked at all these books and all these manuscripts but at present, I cannot recollect any passage out of all my books and papers wherein I can rest my soul save this passage from the sacred scripture. And I went ahead to quote the passage we read today. I will be glad if it can be projected on the screen so that we can read Titus chapter 2, 11 to 14. One, two, three, go. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and what they lost we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself as his own special people zealous for good works he made it clear that these were the only words he could remember that can give him respite courage to face death there is no doubt that we all are recipients of god's grace And like I've said at the beginning of the year and even last Sunday, God's grace has many facets, many dimensions, types, kinds of the grace of God. And I'm believing God that before this year ends, I will come up with what I call the manifold grace of God. I want to examine the, deep, the various dimensions of the grace of God. Because some of us, it's only one dimension we know. I want to take time to study and find out the various dimensions. I've just discovered that we have both what I call the public grace or general grace and the particular grace. The grace that makes all of us to be alive today is what? General grace. You don't have to be a Christian to get that grace. Have you? You and I are alive today all by the grace of God. 
you are seated in this service in this auditorium today by what the grace of god there are those who would have loved to come to this worship but they didn't have the grace to what to be here something happened they can't manage to be here that you are hearing my voice that i'm able to bring this message is by what the grace of god see many times we never know the import of some things until we lose them i've shared it before there was one day a saturday night i was very fine i was saturday afternoon i was very fine in the evening i was feeling something along my throat but it wasn't too bad by the time i would wake up in the morning it was clear that i can't speak and i will preach every attempt to speak the pain gets aggravated so the best thing for me is to do what and i was wondering how i would come before all of you in the service and say so i asked god for grace i said god even if this is the last one just give me grace even if the pain is going on just scare me through I managed to preach that Sunday. Many may not know I have a problem. Maybe my family members who knew I struggled overnight. I managed through the day, but the following Monday morning, the first thing I did was to go to my doctor. I drove down there. I said, Doctor. And then they told me what could have happened. Doctor said he had I had tonsils. Where's where's uh, the doctor? Tonsillitis that uh, the thing was blocking my... I never know that thing is as... I said, no, I won't do any operation for you, but I can give you some drugs. It will shrink it. And after about two, three days, then I saw the import of opening my mouth and what? Some of us just talk here. You don't know his grace that you have that mouth. There are people that... They will have talked better than you, but... So there is a dimension of general grace and there is a dimension of particular grace, peculiar grace, special grace. And today, by the grace of God, we are going to look at a particular kind of grace that is called the grace that brings what? Salvation. Not the grace that brought you to service. For the grace that brings what salvation there are so many ways we can define grace or describe grace yesterday at the Bible in Gilead I gave you three definitions of grace as God leads us in the course of the year I will be expanding some of them but the most popular definition of grace is unmerited what favor and I remember at the first Seekers Breakthrough, which we had first Wednesday of the year, I tried a little bit to differentiate between grace and mercy. Grace is God giving you what you do not deserve. The favor, the blessing, the breakthrough, the care, the love, that you do not deserve god gives you that is what grace mercy is god not giving you what you deserve the punishments you deserve for your disobedience when god doesn't give you that punishment that is what mercy So, in a very short form, grace is God not giving us what we do not deserve. Mercy is God not giving us what we deserve. A farmer suddenly discovered that one of his chicken, probably the biggest one, was stolen. 
And he did something that was so unique. Instead of going around, he just plays an advert on the newspaper, the community newspaper. Please, whoever stole a chicken from so so farm on the fifth of the month, should please contact me. Listen. If he had stolen because he's poor, he was hungry and poor, and needed something to eat, I make a promise to keep the matter secret and provide for him a means of livelihood with which he will have appreciable amount of money to enjoy his life. A day after that advert, the thief came to his house. The minimoji. What draw? What drew the thief? The grace and the mercy the man bestowed. If the advert was, whoever stole this chicken, anybody who can find him. We are going to pay you one million, but that if we are going to kill him the following money, the man will not show his own. To me, grace is that unique privilege that makes sinful men like us to have enough courage to approach our holy God. It is the connector that draws sinful men to God. He is so holy that there is nothing in us that can approach him. It is grace that gives us privilege to be able to talk with holy God. And that's why another definition of grace is God's riches at Christ owns expense. Our salvation is by grace. No man is saved by works. It is grace that brings what? Salvation. Ephesians 2 verse 8 says, we are saved by what? Say it louder. Through faith is important, but we are not saved by faith. Hello? We are not saved by faith. Maybe I can take you through this. We are saved by faith. No, through, sorry, we are saved by grace through faith. But we live by faith. Probably through grace. I hope you are getting it now. We are saved by grace. Grace is what saves us. It's, my faith can't save me. Without grace, my faith is empty. It is faith, it is grace that makes my faith to walk. So we are saved by grace through faith. It is our acceptance of that grace, our belief in that grace that make it work. But it is still grace that what? That saves us. But when we have been saved by grace through faith, then we must learn to live by faith through the grace of God. What grace brings salvation? I'll just try to define it and then I'll be done. The word grace can be found in the Bible in nothing less than 170 times. That will show you the import of grace. 
how important grace is to us. The Greek word, like I said yesterday, is charis, which means favor, care, or help. It speaks of an act which one grants to another. The most popular definition, like I said, is unmerited favor, which is different from mercy. Grace that will bring salvation has some characteristics according to our test today. The Bible says the grace that brings salvation number one it is the grace of god say that with me it is the grace of who for the grace of god that not the grace of man i made it clear last sunday god is the manufacturer of grace god is the producer of what grace and the song the choir sang today give me another addition god is the supplier of grace is the manufacturer is the producer is the supplier the grace that god supplies the grace that men manufacture for themselves cannot save The grace that men produce for themselves cannot what? It can save. Only the grace that God manufactures, produces, and supplies that can save. The grace of who? Of God. Number two, from our test. It is an appearing grace. The grace that appears. I just love the phrase. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to how many people? I didn't hear you. All men. Is this an appearing grace? And it appears to everybody not to select a few whether you are young or whole male or female rich or poor we are all saved by what grace whether you are learned or unlearned we are saved by grace whether you are wise or foolish we are saved by grace the same grace that saved those who are living in banana highland is the one that saved the people who are living in Ajegule. Abi. If your house is duplex and my own is face me and face you, it's the same grace that what? There is no special grace for salvation for people who are living in VI and those who are living in Moshe. The same grace appears to who? To all. But let me say this it is to all men and for all men when it is accepted and found grace that appears must be found must be seen must be accepted and that's when the salvation can manifest number three it is a teaching grace number one it is the grace of god number two it is an appearing grace Number three, it is a teaching grace. I discover from this test that the grace of God is a teacher. Say to your neighbor, grace is a teacher. We have a couple of teachers in this place, but grace itself is what? Is a teacher. The Bible says in that test, the grace that's verse 12 it says teaching us that it is the grace of god that brings salvation that has appeared to all men 
that is teaching us and there are four things in this text that the grace that brings salvation teaches us which i will highlight and i will round up the message number one it teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust that's the first teaching of grace and that's why when people say i'm born again but i can still begin to live my whole life i say they've not known what is the grace of god the grace of god is not a ground for living your life any how you like it is not a license to live anyhow actually grace teaches us to deny what ungodliness that's the first lesson lesson of grace it teaches us that wherever we are found we should live for the master those who truly value grace will deny corruption especially at this time in our land when we are about to go into the election they will not go along with people in rigging of election or engaging on do or die politics they will allow their works and integrity to speak for them and they will vote not because they've been given a measure of gary or rice or one money or the other but they vote according to their words conscience you know what is going on in our land now they are campaigning around for your votes And some people are already collecting things. Grace teaches us not to collect money because we want to vote for what? For people. And that's why I have problem with the current government. Their trader money would have been meaningful to someone like me if it was given three years ago. Let's face the fact. Let's imagine that Tanawajama. Let's stop deceiving ourselves in this country. Did the money just appear this year? Why didn't that money appear two years ago? Because it's still our money anyway. Why is it appearing close to what? I don't care who is distributing it. But grace says, vote according to your words. Your conscience as you are led whoever you believe after prayerfully considering it will rule us or lead us well vote for him or her not because they brought something to your backyard grace is a teacher and is teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust it teaches us, secondly, to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. That's the second lesson or second teaching of grace. Grace as a teacher. The second subject it teaches is soberly, righteously, and godly living in the present. That is second syllabus. Syllabus number one. Denying ungodliness and what? That is <laughs> subject one. Subject two. Living soberly, righteously, and godly where? In the present age. Those who have truly known this grace, they strive daily to live for God. It does not mean they are perfect. But in their offices, in their businesses, Wherever they are found, they are striving daily to live soberly, to live righteously, to live godly in the present age. Because they know they are living under grace. And number three, the third lesson of grace 
This grace teaches us to look forward to the second coming of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grace gives us patience. It gives us expectations that in spite of our trials, our travails, our problems, our struggles, our weaknesses, we should still be looking forward to the coming of who? We are daily waiting for his coming. But we know that's where our real hope is. It's not part of my message. But I've always said it before. Any hope we put in any man, we end up disappointing us. Hello? I shared the revelation God gave me at the Bam and Gilead service yesterday, and I said, I won't talk too much. It's only God that will save us in Nigeria. Too many deceptions. And the man of God was in my office this morning. He came from the north. One of those who are going to lead a program here tomorrow, I will be announcing that tomorrow if some of you can attend. They said it's a marketplace leadership training program. Well, after we have discussed, they decided that we can allow members who are interested to come. Their plan was just for pastors in Lagos. But the man was sharing with me, and as if he was there yesterday, thank God the director of the College of Theology was the one who brought them to the office after I opened heaven service. And exactly what I said was what he was saying. There is too much deception in the land. May God give you grace to see it and not fall for it. Let me keep quiet. Vote <laughs> according to your words. Let nobody come and entice you with words. Let no one. The Messiah I have not seen. The only Messiah I know is who? May he save us. From the hands of Ayena, who are calling themselves Messiah. The only hope we have, the blessed hope we have, is in our Lord. And grace teaches us to be expectant. Looking forward to the coming of the And the fourth one, the fourth lesson of grace. Grace teaches us to be zealous for good works. The abounding grace that God is going to pour on you and me this year is for good works. Don't forget our golden text. God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you will have all what? Sufficiency in all things and have abundance for what? For good works. Say to your neighbor, this is the year of good works. Receive grace to do good works. Receive grace to do good works. Grace to do good works. To make impact. A man of grace is a man of good works. Whether as a leader or as a follower. If we have found this grace, we must be ready to do good works in our homes, in our offices, in the church, in the neighborhood, even in our nation. A man of grace is a patriot. He seeks the good of his land. He doesn't support them to destroy the land. grace that brings salvation is the grace of God. It is an appearing grace. It has appeared to all of us. If you are here at this service and you have not given your life to Christ, it's not because that grace has not appeared. It is because you have not acknowledged what? That grace. And it's still available today for you to be saved. 
There's no how bad a man can be that this grace cannot save him. And there's no how good a man is that he does not need this grace. It is a teaching grace. Let me close with this. When the great cathedral of New York, which was single handedly built by a wealthy lady, was to be dedicated, the agent of this wealthy woman. Can I pray for someone? I don't know. It just came to my heart. Receive grace to single and then build an auditorium for God. I don't know who has that. I don't know why it just came. You finish and say, let it be the place where they will be worshipping who? God. So people have done it. May God give some of ourselves grace to do that as in the name of Jesus. So the day they were to hand over this cathedral, to the Episcopal Church in New York, an agent came with the deed of the property. And as an agent was handing over the deed of the property to the Episcopal Bishop of New York, the bishop brought out a one dollar note. With a paper to be signed. And gave it to the agent as the price of purchase of the structure. People were wondering what is one dollar has to do with a whole cathedral that was built with millions of dollars. But that was the only way the transaction could be legal. Are recognized. No great grandchild of that woman can wake up one day and say, Our mother donated this building, we want it back. No, we bought this building with what? Nobody can take it away from them. It was wisdom. One dollar may look so small, but it makes the transaction effectual. It protected the property. In the same vein, no matter what you and I do, it is still the grace that is covering us. But it does not mean we are not putting effort. But the effort we are putting in is so infinitesimal compared to what grace affords us. I am prayerful. I study the word of God. I serve in the choir. I give my offering. I am generous. Yeah, all those things you are doing, it is still by grace. And it is so small to what grace provides. The grace of God is priceless. The grace of God is boundless. The grace of God is limitless. Receive the grace. Find that grace. Enjoy that grace. Appreciate that grace. Celebrate that grace. Value that grace. And honor God with a better life. The grace of God was personified through Jesus Christ. No, that's a revelation I got when I was looking at this scripture. No, there is this controversy sometimes. People will say, is Jesus God? And later they will tell us, is there any place in the Bible where it is mentioned that Jesus is who? If you are one of those who are confused, I'll give you a passage. Go back to verse 13 of our scripture for me, please. At least take this home. If people are telling you, is there anywhere it is written that Jesus is God? Let's read together. Looking for what? And what? 
of who? I didn't hear you. And who? Who is who? Who is our great God? I didn't hear you. The blessed appearing of our great God and Savior. Who? Jesus is God. Say that to your neighbor. If you are finding it, they are confusing you. Say, blessed appearing, glorious appearing of our great God. Great God. And our Savior. He didn't say in form of Jesus, but he said Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is also the grace of God personified that has appeared to all men unto salvation. If you are here under my voice today and you have not received that grace, you will have an opportunity to come under him. And may that grace work for you. Let's bow our heads as we pray together. Thank the Lord for the word you have heard and the message about the beginning area of grace. That is the grace that brings salvation. In the course of the year, God will be opening our eyes to other dimensions. But this is the grace that brings salvation. If you're already saved, you've accepted that grace, thank God. Appreciate him for this grace that he has given you. If you are yet to be saved, to be born again, I want to give you the privilege, the opportunity to give your life to Jesus today so that you can also receive the grace that brings salvation. If you are in this service, you know you need to give your life to Jesus. As your Lord and Savior to be born again, to receive the grace that brings salvation. You can lift up your right hand wherever you are there. I want to pray with you. You know you need Jesus for your life. You know you need this grace that brings salvation. It is not about going to church. It's about knowing him personally as your Lord and Savior. You can lift up your right hand so that I can pray with you today. It will be your day of changing destiny. God bless you, my daughter. If you are lifting your hand, lift it up very well. God bless you. God bless you, my daughter. Heaven is rejoicing over you at this decision. You want to give your life to the Lord? Lift up your hand very well. God bless you. Secondly, you are here at this service. You've given your life to Jesus Christ. You've seen that grace. But you know you need strength to obey the teachings of that grace. You need him to help you. You need him to help you. You can lift up your right hand as well so that we can pray together. There's a song at this side, Dickin, the girl, the lady is here at this side, this other hand, this particular hand. There's a song that we've sung several times before. But I want us to sing that song meaningfully today. And all of you who have lifted your right hand up, I want you to find your way to the altar so that we can pray together. While we all stand on our feet to sing the song. It says, give me grace to follow. Abundance grace to follow. Give me grace to follow. Your grace is enough for me. Give me grace to follow. Abundant grace, grace to follow. Give me grace to follow. Your grace is enough for me. Give me grace to follow.
if you are giving your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, please your right hand on your chest and say this with me first before I pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word of grace that I've had today. Today, I surrender my life to you, Jesus. You are my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. I confess my sins. Forgive me and cleanse me by your blood. Let your Holy Spirit take over my life from today. Jesus, be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Mary Father, I want to thank you for this privilege. Give it to your children to come to your altar. Either to turn their lives to you or to rededicate their lives. I pray for grace to be strong. Release unto them in Jesus' name. Lord, no matter the challenge, this one will remain strong for you. Wherever they need grace, you will supply. Whatever dimension of problem that they have, the corresponding dimension of grace shall be ministered to them. These ones will testify to your goodness and the devil will be put to shame in their lives. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. The Lord bless you. Give me grace to follow. Abundant grace to follow. Give me grace to follow.